Hello students, welcome to our read aloud. Today we will continue our learning about George Washington with a very special story. And I'm wondering if afterwards it helps you make a connection with another famous American we've studied before. Here we go. George Washington and the General's Dog by Frank Murphy, illustrated by Richard Waltz. On the front, I see George Washington and a big dog. And then in the background here, I see some soldiers marching. So I think this must take place during the Revolutionary War. And there's a blurb on the back, but I don't want to spill the beans. So I think we'll skip the blurb for today. Okay, and there are two cute little dogs. And here's the title page, George Washington and the General's Dog. And it looks like the same dog as on the cover. Okay, so here's the first page. And I see um, three kids. It looks like they're in a museum. And there's a big portrait of George Washington. Remember, a portrait is a picture uh, of a person, a painting of a person. George Washington is one of America's greatest heroes. Most people know that George was honest and brave, but there is something about George that people don't always know. And look at the bottom, I notice a detail. I see these are the years of his lifespan. He was born in 1732, he died in 1799. Oh, there's some funny little thing in the picture. This makes me think of Easter. Is there an Easter bunny? Let's see. George Washington loved animals. Okay, I'm going to let us look at this page for a minute. Look at all those animals with George in front of Mount Vernon, right? That's his big house up on the hill. There's that little bunny, but I see dogs, turkeys, donkeys, ducks. Oh, there's some blackbirds up there too. Okay, let's keep going. George learned to ride horses as a boy. Sometimes he rode into town. George rode fast, but he never fell. People said he was the best rider they had ever seen. There he is. Giddy up, giddy up. And I noticed here this says Fredericksburg, Virginia General Store. Fredericksburg, uh, which is just about an hour south of where we live, was the biggest town near the farm where he grew up. When George grew up, he moved to a farm called Mount Vernon. Every day, George checked on the horses and hogs. He checked on the oxen, mules, and sheep. But he spent the most time with his dogs. George had a lot of dogs. He owned 36 dogs in his lifetime. That means in his whole life, not all at once necessarily. He took them hunting. He played with them. He even gave them cute names like Mopsy, Sweet Lips, and True Love. And if you look closely on the collars of these dogs, you can see initials. Maybe you can guess and figure out which one is Sweet Lips, which one is Mopsy, and which one is True love. Sometimes George spoiled his dogs. He let them run around the house. One day, George's wife, Martha, cooked a ham for dinner. George's dog, Vulcan, jumped up and stole the ham right off the table. Martha chased after him, but George just laughed. George liked being at Mount Vernon with Martha and the animals, but America needed him. Ooh, look, there's George and Martha reading the newspaper, and this one says, no tea tax. And this newspaper says, revolution. It's called the Virginia Gazette. That's a little bit of an old-fashioned name for a newspaper. America was not yet its own country. It was an English colony. That means it belonged to England. Many American colonists wanted to be free from England, so they went to war. The war was called the American Revolution. The colonists chose George to be their general. George chose his favorite dog, Sweet Lips, to go with him. He said goodbye to Martha and Mount Vernon. He jumped on his horse, Nelson. 
Then he rode into battle. In George's day, soldiers often brought dogs with them to war. Dogs helped hunt. Dogs helped track the way. Dogs helped guard against wild animals. Best of all, dogs were great partners. Nice smiley face there. The general of the English army was named William Howe. He had a dog too. He also had 9,000 soldiers. They had plenty of supplies. George did not have nearly as many supplies. Sometimes his soldiers were cold. Sometimes they were hungry, but they did not give up. Oh. I think this is George maybe visiting his cold soldiers and there's little sweet lips in the background. In the fall of 1777, George's troops went to Pennsylvania. They were fighting the English troops. Guns fired. Rat -tat -tat. Cannons roared. Boom, bang. Smoke filled the air. Finally, the fighting ended. The English soldiers went back to their camp. The battle was over for the day. The smoke began to clear. George noticed a dog without a soldier. It looked lost. George bent down and patted the dog dog's head. And I always think in this picture, maybe Sweet Lips is thinking, huh? hey George, you're with me. You're my master. <laughs> the dog followed George back to the colonist camp. He wagged his tail. Whose dog is this? wondered George. George looked at the dog's collar. The tag had a man's name on it. That name was William Howe. William Howe? George couldn't believe his eyes. William Howe was the enemy. And if you, if you turn it upside down, you can read, if lost, return to William Howe. <laughs> Fun detail. Word about the enemy dog spread through the camp. Some of George's men wanted to keep the dog, but George said no. George believed the dog belonged with his master. George had his friend Alexander Hamilton write a note to General Howe. The note said that George wanted to return the dog. And look, there's, Ma, there's Sweet Lips also peeking in like, what's going on <laughs> with that other big dog? Both sides raised white flags. The white flags meant no one could fight. George's soldiers walked the dog across the battlefield. They gave him back to General Howe. People in England found out about George's good deed. Oh, I gotta stop and think. Let's see, that says London Crumpet, London Gazette. So I think this is a picture showing some people in London finding out about the news. They found out about his good deed. The English still wanted to beat George and win the war, but now they respected him. Some English people even liked him. They had never heard a story of such great kindness between enemies. Friends around the world wanted to honor George. They wondered what he would like. Then they remembered the story about the dog. Soon presents started arriving at Mount Vernon. The king of Spain sent George a mule. George named him Royal Gift. Oh, that's kind of like a joke. Look, to George from King Carlos. <laughs> a friend from France gave George an even bigger gift, seven dogs. From Marquis de Lafayette to George Washington, Mount Vernon, Virginia. Wow, seven dogs. George's work was not done, though. The American people needed a leader. They elected George to be their first president. People all over America loved their new president. They cheered when he rode by in his carriage. They knew it was him because his six white horses always led the way. 
And you can bet he probably knew all his horses too, right? The end. And what I think is so cool about this book and some other uh, historical stories like this that I have is that they're really true. And in the back, there's this very cool information. Look at this. It says, author's note, the stories in this book are true. We can't be sure exactly how they all happened, but we've tried our best to show the way things might have been. And here's a portrait of George Washington with Nelson. Nelson was the horse that he took to battle, his favorite best horse. Here's a picture of Alexander Hamilton, who is more famous now because somebody wrote a musical about him, like a musical play that you may have heard about. And there's an old picture of William Howe, the English general. And right here is a picture. That's a picture of the actual note that that George Washington told Alexander Hamilton to write to General Howe. And the note says, General Washington's compliments to General Howe does himself the pleasure to return him a dog which accidentally fell into his hands and by the inspection on the collar appears to belong to General Howe. That's his real writing. Isn't that cool? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed George Washington and the General's Dog. And... I'm wondering if you'll be able to make a connection to another famous American we've already studied. I look forward to talking with you tomorrow. Bye.